Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the series Python for Beginners and in this video we will be talking about a few exercises with NumPy. You know this particular series focuses on NumPy and in the upcoming videos, in the upcoming series we will be talking about other libraries and that is how we will be progressing so that you learn it chronologically and it builds your basics. So let me take a cell and let me start with np.arrange today. So if you write np.arrange say 6 then I run it. So what you see it gives you from 0 to 5 there are 6 elements if you count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you are having 6 elements it is starting with 0 and hence ending with 5. Let me run with some other number, say 12. So it should end at 11 and it starts from 0. So you can see it. It has given you the absolute answer. Now, what if I don't want to do it with an interval of 1? If I want to do it with some other interval. For that, what I can do is np.arrange. I can write the starting number say for me it would be 5 I want it to go up to 15 and I want an interval of 3 so if I run it you can see initial number is 5 then plus 3 8 again plus 3 11 again plus 3 14 no other number because I have restricted up to 5 what if I make it a big number say 105 so it will give you many elements you can see this is how it is increasing the elements and it is stopping at 104 because my limit is 105 so those are the tools this could be necessary for your simulations for your programming uh, it might be necessary whenever you are working with different things so now we can't understand but we'll be working with examples also whatever we are showing it today it has some use and we are also committed to that we'll show you where exactly all the things can be used so there will be separate videos for that so now let us learn about np.lin space this is very important for numerical methodologies I will show you in the upcoming videos when we will be solving numerical say differential equations or something in those cases those are very important suppose I want or want to have a lean space at the as the name suggests it will give you linearly spaced elements suppose I want to start from 0 and I want to stop at 15 and I want say 10 numbers in between so what I can do is number equal to 10 so let me run it what happens let's see so you can see it has started from 0 it went up to 15 if I make it a uh, even number it will be easier, easier to understand so let us make it 20 so you can see again let me start from 1 now it will be good I guess Anyway, so you can see equispaced, the difference is same between any two consecutive elements. If I make it say 0 to 10 and say I make it number equal to 5, then you see it is giving you a good values like 0, 2.55 and this is how it will go up to 10 so you can actually play around with this now another thing I'll talk about I did not now uh, what you see is whenever I'm taking those numbers it is coming in decimals like to like 2.5 now I can control the data type as well so how to control the data type let me take one example suppose a variable a I choose and uh, say I choose np dot say once I have shown you this last day say I want to write five ones and 
for mentioning the data type what you need to write is d type so this is a syntax so you should understand this so d type and then you have to have a equals uh, symbol and then np dot data type well, which data type say i want to have float 64 i'll talk about all those data type in a separate video but for the time being you just understand float can access decimal points that is after point you have some values so you can see it has written one but you have one point one point like this instead of float 64 if i take in 64 that will give you an integer and you will not have any decimal so you can see it is different so data type is very important in any programming language not only in python suppose you are working with summation or some other mathematical operations so there might be a requirement of having same data type, data type otherwise you may get some errors so you should be careful when you are learning about each and everything and as i have promised i'll be working with all the applications whatever i'm talking about i'll take some application and i will show where exactly those things are useful now let me work with few more arrangements or few more things suppose i take two array say a equal to np dot simple arrays i am taking say np dot ones say i have or uh, let me define an array say np dot array within first bracket in a box bracket the elements say 2 comma 3 comma 5 say let me define another array a b equal to np dot array within first bracket within box bracket say these elements are 5 2 6 now what i do i want to merge this and want to make an array of say 6 elements and for that what we have to do there is an option before that let me just run it and let me show you print a if i print a it will show you print a if i give print b it will show you print b so you can see those are a and b now what i want to i want to merge these two so you you have an option np dot np dot you can see whenever you are writing you will be getting some suggestions so i want to work with this np dot concatenate okay so let me choose this and then what you need to do within a bracket then you put another bracket and put your arrays by commas okay now let me put it in some other say variable c and let me print c so print c now if i work with this you see print a is giving you 235 526 and this is giving 235 526 so it is merging this two so this is a very good option again i am telling i will be showing some usage of all those things now few more things let us learn today suppose i have an array a and i want to access the second element then what you need to do a within third bracket first elements element is always denoted by zero let me just show you if i write a zero it gives me two so this number if i write a one it will give me three because the second number and if i write a5 it will sorry a2 it will give me the number 5 now what suppose i want to add something a2 and i want to add b1 now b1 is which one uh, within box bracket b1 is your 5 and a2 is 3 so it should add this 2 that means 5 plus 3 is 8 let us see uh, no a2 sorry a2 is 5 actually 0 1 2 
a2 is 5 and b1 is 2 so it is adding this 2 I'm very sorry so you can actually access those elements and you, you can do some operations like additions you can do you can do multiplications you can just play around because learning any programming language is initially fun and then it will snatch your nights but you will enjoy that because once your code will not run you will be in and you will be under pressure but once you debug all the things you will have a very good experience so we will be having all those experiences in this particular series now today uh, I have talked about np.arrange, np.linspace, how to access element, how to merge two arrays. So this much is sufficient for the initial thing. Then in the next video, we'll be talking about slicing. What is slicing? We'll, talking, we'll be talking more about 2D arrays because today mostly we have talked about 1D array. Uh, meanwhile, I just request you to subscribe to our channel so that you get the updates and it will be helpful for you. Thank you.